Hello and welcome to today's video. I am Crystal Ann Compton. I am so excited to be with you here today and I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. Before we get into the content of this video, I just want to remind you to please subscribe and like and comment and share. It really does help me to continue to do this work. So thank you so much in advance. In this video, I am having a conversation with my recent podcast guest, Alicia Clark Tepper. And for those of you who don't know, my podcast is Life Magnetics, which you can find wherever you enjoy your favorite podcasts. In this conversation, this little excerpt from that podcast, we are discussing upcoming predictions for 2022 and beyond. And Alicia is going to give us some astrological perspective, and I'm just going to be sharing some of my intuitive stuff. And it's just a really cool conversation on what we should all be focusing upon as we go into the coming months and years. It's a really good clip. I hope you enjoy it. And without further ado, let's get into it. So before we leave, and um, you're going to share with us how people can find you, of course, but I did want to ask you, because I, I ask folks who come on the pod, what their general impressions are of the upcoming year. And I get a lot of intuitives and mediums, and they kind of talk about that aspect of it. But I know you're a moonologist, you're an astrologist or an astrologer. Do you have a sense of 2022 and what the energies are going to be like for the collective or maybe moving into 2023. I know a lot of people are worried because it's kind of crazy out there. It seems a little crazy out there. Uh, lockdowns, COVID, Canada, everyone's honking. Things are going on <laughs> everywhere. And it's not just us in North America, but what are you feeling in terms of the energy going forward, especially with an eye towards when things start to feel a little bit better for everybody? Um, well, the energy for 2022 has a, a feeling of, I know what I don't want, but we haven't solidified all the potential options for what I could get into. So it is to take small steps forward and allow yourself to reevaluate all the newness that's going to be coming in because we are on the on the teetering of a whole bunch of new ideas kind of like the industrial revolution when all of a sudden all these inventions came in and for the next uh 18 months or so we've got a couple different things going on and and pluto is a big player in that and pluto is the planet that does not allow the things to stay the way that they've been and with that happening it's going almost in the sky right now uh on the second of march the the Pluto, the Mars, and the Venus all share the same degree in the sky which when that happens there is no um, individuality. They are all on the same page. And as that happens, we're taking a new way forward. And if you've slowly been working on that, it won't be as robust as if you've not been doing anything with um, progressing yourself into a different thing, because this energy doesn't ask you to do what has been done before. It wants you to to learn new, do new, and and become more authentically you. It sounds like, <clears throat> so Pluto, Mars, and Venus, Mars, God of War, Venus, love, and resources, inner, inner world love. So we go ahead. <laughs> divine masculine, divine feminine. Right, right. So that's interesting. So taking steps, continuing to take steps, but always evaluating. So the, the solution might not be at hand. In other words, like we might not really know all the information at this juncture. So people out there on social media screaming at each other because you know everything. Maybe you don't know everything. How about that? <laughs> but so there's more stuff coming in. We need to be observant. We need to feel that, right? And we need to also be strong in our stance, but we have to be willing to not know. feels like there's so you say we're teetering on like industrial revolution that so we're teetering on a big social consciousness like a, change. Yes. When do you feel Absolutely. that? When do you feel that coming? Cause I've been feeling that too, Alicia. <laughs> I've been feeling that too. I've got a, I've got a year for it that it's lighting up for me, but what about you? 
Well, the 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 teetering point I was saying is in 18 months. So in like uh, I don't know the exact day that Pluto goes into Aquarius, but that the energy of Capricorn, as we talked about earlier, is all about structure. It's about achieving. It's about goals. It's about um, like corporate and how they work. And then we're going into Aquarius with Pluto, which is about don't tell me what to do. The way things have been done before isn't going to work. And so we're at that squeezing out point mm -hmm. of everything that doesn't work for the corporate, the executive, our work life, the way that over the last two years, we've had a very different work and life balance. And so all of that being restructured, it, 2024 will be a definitively different feeling. Oh gosh, another election year in the US. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, I'm I'm sensing 2025 to 2028 high like slash nine. Like this next few years for us is going to be, I mean I don't know if turbulent is the word, but like a lot of foundational things shifting around and re getting like the tower card almost. And like every time I see the tower card in a spread, I'm like, oh shit, there's the tower card. But at the same time, the structure does need to be dismantled and it needs to fall in order to erect a new structure. I feel like that is what's been going on. And I just know that a lot of us want to get to the new tower already mm. though. Do you know what I mean? Like we want to, we want to have the roaring twenties again. We want to be celebratory. We want to have a vision for something. And right now it feels kind of dark and ominous out there. But it's a journey. You yeah. know, even if we get to the place, we still have to journey. And so there'll still be a place to go after that. But the, the getting there part right now is is just knowing that you choose what's right for you. And when you don't know what's right for you, know what is not right for you and take that next step towards the smallest thing that may be more in alignment than uh, because you know what's not working. And it, it's as easy. Uh, the thing that I've been doing a lot lately, and I talk about this, is taking uh, and using sustainable products. So I've slowly started working through my laundry detergent, all of my cleaning products, um, the the towels that I use, and I'm trying to be sustainable and, and not contribute to the, the landfills and everything. And also for my own health, as well as the environmental health. And so picking small things, like I know that I don't want to just uh, contribute to the paper towel makers anymore. I want to <laughs> contribute to this. And I choose to buy my shampoo from a friend who makes it because I know that she makes the product and then she receives the benefit instead of just buying everything corporate, even though Amazon is so easy these days. You know, one of my uh, former sister-in-laws said to me something very interesting, like back in the early aughts, she said she had read a, an article and she said that it's only possible for a human being person to literally care and, and everything that entails, mind, body, spirit, emotions, thoughts, what you're thinking about. It's only possible for a person to literally care about the amount of people that constitutes a village. Mm -hmm. So like whatever that is, you know, maybe that's a hundred people, maybe that's 20 people. We really don't have capacity as human beings to like stretch that. You can do it from a meta place and a visionary place. I can pray for the world, offer healing to the world, but I can't literally worry about absolutely everybody or else I dismantle my own self. And so little steps like that or focusing on like just shifting in ways that are helpful to you and to your community, to your village, but that also have a ripple effect out to the world is a really profound way to think about it. And it also reminds me of Esther Hicks. And I don't know why this doesn't necessarily completely correlate or align, but Esther Hicks talks a lot about approximation and substitution. Like if you can't get to the actual feeling of being the thing you want to be, substitute to the next best thing or to as high yes. as you can go. Yes. Like uh, uh, Today I can go to, I really feel love for my dogs though. Or I really feel, really feel joy when I'm gardening. That substitution is not, maybe not as powerful in terms of manifestation and creation, but it's 
just as powerful in terms of vibration and what's created from that. Do you know what I'm saying? 100%. And yes, that is exactly it. It is a loop back into that. You know what you don't want and you, but the in front of you is unfathomable because the options haven't even been materialized yet. And so we are in this limbo state and having just that one thing that you know that that is in alignment for you will will be that space to reside for the next till 2025. And that just makes it so much simpler, doesn't it? It's just more simple when you look at it um, from what you, what's possible for you to do and what feels good for what, for you to do. And this is what, uh, Joseph Campbell was talking about when he said, just simply follow your bliss, whatever's lighting you up. That's the way to go for yourself, but everyone else as well. The stars know who you are. Get ready to dive into your personal solar return chart and discover what waits for you in the coming days, weeks, months, and even years. Connecting to your astrological alignments will help you to optimize opportunities and understand the path of your life and your soul. This live two-day online astrology workshop takes place February 26th and 27th and is perfect for beginners and the experienced alike. Make sure to check out all the details in the link in the description and we hope to see you there.